explain how production takes place in the above mentioned relations, but what they do not explain is how these relations themselves are produced, that is, the historical movement that gave them birth. Thus, the ideas, these categories, are as little eternal as the relations they express. They are historical and transitory products. In Karl Marx's The Poverty of Philosophy, accessed July 14, 2015, HTTPS. Colon slash slash www.marxist.org slash archive slash marx slash work slash 1847 slash poverty hyper philosophy slash ch02.html. This footnote only exists insofar as a drone like supporting base seem to be necessary according to the conditions of this page. Numbers 1b and 2 are seemingly treated as a whole or as subsequent parts of the whole. Certain tools must be explored by a process of trial and error. 
We would recommend not to generally question the predetermined approach unless strictly necessary. 44. Goal-oriented process. 45. This is a temporal structure. Four blocks of four timelines, each annotated. Each block may be performed by one player. Blocks are meant to be performed simultaneously. Players may start performing simultaneously. Materials to be performed are not determined. They shall be improvised or taken from numbers 1A, 1B, 2, and or 3. Timelines are meant to be read descendingly. That is, the highest timeline is meant to be interpreted first, followed by the second highest timeline and successively, parentheses. This is reiterated by letters in alphabetical order, close parentheses. This method asks the performer to read the score in a non-linear manner. The main materials are not read linearly from beginning to end, but rather by following the bracketed areas determined by the timelines. This will create situations in which some of the same areas perform multiple times at different speeds. A specific example may clarify how to read fractions. Let us assume that original length is assigned an arbitrary duration of 10 seconds. If original length were to be printed, of consistent and differentiated terrain may be found I thought this might behind be the most apparent about material reality. The first part you heard was the spaceship noise. This time might surely be a totality. Global. That's chapter one. The section that you're in right now, this is chapter two. Chapter two, we could imagine kind of like these four fingers in my hand. The main block of material. Our question is simple. Like to what extent what is this right one necessary? Back to our most needed material circumstances. That kind of one may discover right the absurdity right of trying to be on the panorama that requires our most needed attention. We're supposed to get up and explain to the audience something about how we can see here. To our Carlos Rick as a poem. Collective necessity, my need to transcend the philosophy of Mill. If original length were to be printed in such a way that its geometrically horizontal length were, say, 10 centimeters, that would result in each centimeter representing one second, parentheses, one centimeter equals one second, close parentheses. This proportion is correlative to everything else. Meaningful discourse. Let us now make the assumption that the very top timeline, parentheses, A, one quarter, close parentheses, encloses an area that is horizontally 10 centimeters long. Necessarily involved. If we were to read this Indeed without the influence of the fraction applied to the timeline, we would conclude that these 10 centimeters need to be performed in 10 seconds. Under a differentiated tree. The influence of any determined fraction, parentheses, say, one quarter, close parentheses, would change this, thus forcing the performer to interpret this particular timeline in 2.5 seconds. Traumatic effect. Parentheses, for in this case, one quarter of 10 equals 2.5 close parentheses. Consequentially, all timelines imply different techniques, though always in relation to the originally chosen durations assigned to the original length. Value may recur. When we were rehearsing in this room, number 46. Um, there's a little bit of a break. The traumatic effect of the original the concept of peace parentheses, for four clarinetists, close parentheses, is still present about the version. The fifth play is neglected, as well as the solo version. Attempts of number four for five or one this player is are encouraged. 47. The technology to be used will depend on the funding the project support. receives. Greater funding should, hopefully, exclamation mark, lead to more advanced resources. Particular tradition. Minimum setup per performer recommended, instruments, and laptop computer. 48. Number four may be used in order to structurally organize number five B. Rehearsal recordings may be played, stopped, or reproduced at different speeds according to the delimited proportions of number four. 49. As if looking oneself in the mirror, attempting to follow what one's projection does in real life past as reference, the future thus materialising as synthesis. Democratically, 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 democratically.
democratically. democratically. If we come together democratically, we read democratically, we interpret democratically, we decide. We come together democratically, we read democratically, we interpret democratically, we decide. We come together democratically, we read democratically, we interpret democratically, we decide. We come together democratically, we read democratically, we interpret democratically, we decide. We come together democratically, we read democratically, we interpret democratically, we decide. We come together democratically, we read democratically, we interpret democratically, we decide. The future thus materializing a synthesis. Or for those who prefer a comedic parallel, Harper and Groucho Marx in duck soup playing each other in front of a non-existent mirror. When Shannon gave information theory its definitive formulation in 1948, his main concern was how to get a message through a channel with the least possible distortion. Whenever a message is transmitted, some noise inevitably intrudes. Snow on a television set, static on a radio, blurred type, or misprints in a book. Shannon called this noise equivocation and defined it using the same mathematical terms he used for information. In fact, the equivocation is information, but from the sender's point of view, it interferes with the intended message. Shannon therefore gave the equivocation a negative sign in his equation, indicated that it should be subtracted from the received message in order to get the original information back again. And Catherine Hale's Two Voices, One Channel. Equivocation in Michelle Serra's Substance, 17, number 3, 1988. Emphasis added. is performing and performing is rehearsing. There should be no substantial difference between these two activities. The very process of this work is a
Alpha. The Council of the Eighteen had assumed control over the entire infrastructure of the first civilization. No one knows how it happened, but the Council seemed to emerge as the sole governmental alternative after a brief period of alleged chaos where any course of action appeared to be possible. During that time, a revolutionary party, relatively organized considering the circumstances, almost succeeded in securing its own form of government after coupling local and numerous collectives with each other. Eventually, the insurrection, as the council labeled it a posteriori, failed and those who had been transformed by the cultural revolution promoted by the revolutionary party had sooner or later been subsumed under the rule of the 18. Their voices had simply quieted. The council comprised 18 despots. Each had their own stance on the state of affairs but they would always agree that there could not and should not be any other form of government. Five of them, however, would come across as more open-minded. One of them would even not follow some of the supposedly articulate principles that the council had approved by an overwhelming majority during its inaugural reunion. This seemingly receptive attitude is what brought some conscious individuals to demand structural reforms. They almost convinced a widely known member of the 18, and he certainly was not the least intransigent one. However, the actual usefulness of that action remained unknown until the end of time. Some claimed that it served to make sure that another despot, possibly one of the most tyrannical individuals of the first civilization, would not become the 19th member of the council. But that was never proved. A second group of reformers tried again, but this time they realized that no one was listening to their demands. Some reformists even became collaborationists by mingling with one of the curtest members of the council. They thought that perhaps this way, they could ultimately savor some of the benefits the 18 enjoyed. After all, reformism had been deemed to fail from the very beginning. The truth is that the Council of the Eighteen had close to absolute power, to the extent that they had been able to create a convincing narrative derived from a conceptual division of history into two fundamental eras. The first era, which was labeled as short, insignificant, rudimentary, and chaotic, and the second era, theirs, which they portrayed as the ultimate model for order and freedom. In reality, their society was quite far from such claims. Time eventually ended and their civilization disappeared suddenly into the most absolute silence. There had been nothing particularly odd during their existence that could have led someone to believe that their world would come to an end in such a dramatic and unexpected manner. Alas, life must end, but so do tyrannies. Beta. In the vastness of
Gravity pulls weight itself into the cracks in the fabric of space-time. Would it be over for them or was there some hope for repurpose? In the illusion of resonance corpses made of sonic dust. Ineluctably, they will enter an unresolved cadence of memories, memories of other worlds, of other times, of lines of expectations, and the prioritization of protocol, the unfreedom. And there, the unassailable density in the vastness of Gamma. The moment they realized that they were not alone in the universe was already too late. From the very beginning, their civilization had always existed in four terrestrial planets in the same system, but their respective inhabitants had never learned the existence of other intelligent life in the cosmic neighborhood until the end of everything they had known was inescapable. In fact, it was the scientific community in the first planet that sent a message to the stars in the hopes of achieving first contact. When the second and fourth planets received the transmission, life in the first planet was quickly disappearing and any means its inhabitants had had to maintain communication with their newly discovered system fellows had already been destroyed. At that moment, communication was only possible between the peoples of the second and fourth planets. In spite of the lack of awareness as regards their neighbors, the particular evolutionary trajectory of life had significant similarities across the four planets. Evolution took place according to three fundamental stages. The first had been rather primitive and linear, except for life on the third planet, which had evolved precociously Simultaneously, life in the fourth planet emerged as the chaotic explosion of a highly diverse anomaly, though it eventually calmed down and proceeded with an evolutionary path comparable to those of the neighbors. The second evolutionary stage appeared to demonstrate a higher degree of intelligence on behalf of that species. A clear trajectory of progress towards what the beings believed to be a more comfortable living experience was easily recognizable. During the second stage, the beings had mildly, though unceasingly, transformed the environment for their own benefit, as evidence of their influence on the material reality gradually became irrefutable. By the third, and soon to be final stage of evolution, life in the four planets had certainly gained more sophistication. These were heterogeneous intelligent societies that pursued fair divisions of labor. Far from a life solely focused on survival, as it had been in the beginning, especially in the first and second planets. These were societies that strived for a thriving existence based on self-organized collective efforts. They were utterly convinced of the illusion of permanence. In reality, life in the four planets, also known as the third civilization, had been a failed experiment on evolutionary dynamics done by an alien race that existed in a separate universe. The test had required the preparation of identical biological conditions across all four planets in order to evaluate gradual changes in the genetic drift of that particular species due to random variables. For reasons that remain unknown, 
the supreme alien race put an end to the experiment immediately after the respective populaces from the four planets started to gain awareness of each other. Perhaps after all, the test had been too successful, threateningly successful. An immaterial substance observes their failed experiments through the funnel. A rickety wormhole made by those who will be closer to Effulgen's ascetic pace, vividness in control. From earlier, less civilized times, without a question, unity. In their trajectory, common directionality, in the invisibility of omnipresence. No collapse. Towards complete comprehension. Absolutely. From that throne, it it could project its thoughts. Thoughts about potentials, light and speed, colors and leverage, the universal, unbeknownst to past, present and future civilizations, an infinitude of them, all coexisting through it time ruptured. It was responsible for their phylogeny. One throne, however, would not suffice. Or perhaps necessity inquired into its repurposing where all of them could sit. It believes it cannot challenge that seat. From that chair, they, they could live their own lives.
afterthought. Evaluation. together as well as in the materials of the piece itself. I think maybe more than anything else for me, this piece seemed to be about entanglement and the process of working through all of these elements that are really affecting of our subjectivity as we move through this democratic process together of trying to delve through these materials and come up with something. Where's Juwan? Here. Hey. How do you feel about that? Um, How are you feeling? Good, good. I didn't die much. Really? I didn't have to think. Yeah. Oh, see, that's rough. You didn't give me time, and now you want time. It's very, really, really hard to stand up in the middle of a piece and start talking about what it felt like, the phenomenon of being inside a piece, of performing a piece. 